Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and new Defense Minister Israel Katz met with troops at an undisclosed location in Gaza on Tuesday, where they announced financial rewards and a way out of the territory for Palestinians who helped to release the remaining hostages. Whoever brings us a hostage will find a safe way, he and his family, to get out. We will also give a reward of $5 million for each hostage. You choose, the choice is yours, Netanyahu said while standing next to Katz. The Israel-Hamas war began after militants stormed into Israel on October 7, 2023, killing some 1,200 people mostly civilians. They abducted another 250 and are still holding around 100 people. Around a third of them are believed to be dead. Israel's military response in Gaza has killed almost 44,000 people, Palestinian health officials say. They do not distinguish between civilians and combatants, but say more than half of those killed were women and children. אני רוצה לומר לאלה שמחזיקים אה, את החטופים שלנו, מי שיעז לפגוע בחטופינו, דמו בראשו. אנחנו נרדוף אתכם, אנחנו נשיג אתכם. ואני אומר גם לאלה שרוצים לצאת מה... מבוך הזה. מי שיביא לנו חטוף, ימצא דרך בטוחה, הוא ומשפחתו, לצאת החוצה, ואנחנו ניתן גם תמורה של חמישה מיליון דולר לכל חטוף. תבחרו, הבחירה בידכם. אנחנו צריכים לוודא שהחמאס לא ישלוט כאן ביום שאחרי. לכן קרו כל הדברים, ולכן הם יקרו, ואנחנו נשלים את המשימה הזאת. Israel's Megan David Adam Rescue Services said one woman was killed and 10 people wounded in a Hezbollah rocket attack on the northern Israeli city of Shfarim. According to paramedics who arrived at the scene, the woman was killed instantly and 10 others were injured after a rocket struck a four-story building. The Israeli military said the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah launched more than 100 projectiles toward Israel on Monday. Hezbollah began launching missiles, rockets and drones at Israel on October 8, 2023, in solidarity with Hamas in its war with Israel in Gaza. Israel stepped up their attack against Hezbollah in mid-September. On Monday an Israeli airstrike slammed into a densely populated residential area in Beirut near key government and diplomatic buildings, killing at least five people as the US pressed ahead with ceasefire efforts. More than 3,400 people have been killed in Lebanon by Israeli fire 80% of them in the past eight weeks according to Lebanon's health ministry.
Two days after the U.S. president gave Kiev permission to use long-range American weapons against targets inside the Russian Federation, President Vladimir Putin signed the new Russian nuclear doctrine he had spoken about earlier, Dmitry Medvedev began talking about the approach of a third world war, and Russia began producing mobile shelters in case of a nuclear war. The updated guidelines were first unveiled by Putin in late September, at which point former President Dmitry Medvedev said the new policy should be considered a response to the neo-Nazi Ukrainian regime and its allies for pushing the world towards a nuclear catastrophe. Medvedev was referring to Kiev's continual push for permission to use Western-supplied weaponry for long-range strikes inside Russian territory. According to the Telegram channel Baza, said to have links to Russia's intelligence services, the large-scale launch of missiles against Russia, including those carried by Atoms, would provide grounds for retaliatory action by Moscow under the new guidelines. Actions aimed at isolating part of the territory of the Russian Federation are also included as preconditions for a nuclear response. As well as outlining the parameters for the use of nuclear weapons based on threats to its own territorial integrity, the updated guidelines would regard Belarus, a close ally of Russia, as protected by the country's nuclear umbrella, with any attack on the country viewed as an attack against Moscow itself and meriting a response. Deputy Chairman of the Russian Security Council Dmitry Medvedev predicted the start of World War III after the update of Russia's nuclear doctrine. The politician noted that Kiev's use of NATO long-range weapons to strike Russian territories could be considered an attack, so Ukraine and its allies in the military bloc should be prepared for retaliatory measures. In this case, the right arises to launch a retaliatory strike with weapons of mass destruction against Kiev and the main NATO facilities, wherever they are. And this is already WWII, he added. The deputy chairman of the Security Council added that the current head of the White House, Joe Biden, deliberately allowed Ukraine to use American missiles to attack Russia before leaving office. The politician suggested that the American leader wanted to leave gracefully, taking with him a significant part of humanity. Medvedev recalled that the Ukrainian army had previously attempted to strike Russia with long-range missiles. It is not so important who and when made the decision to use NATO countries' long-range tactical ballistic and cruise missiles deep into the territory of Russia. Especially since there have already been attempts to use them in our country, the politician emphasized. The politician noted that Moscow's enemies are counting not only on the military effect of using long-range weapons, but also on the informational one. Medvedev said that the permission given by Western countries for Ukraine to strike deep into Russia is a deliberate escalation of the current conflict. He added that now the team of the elected US President Donald Trump will have to work hard to deal with the consequences of the decisions made by the Biden administration.